everyone and welcome back to the Cookie Knits channel. My name is Ira and I'm your host here. I'm coming to you from beautiful Sydney, Australia on this beautiful spring day. Um, welcome to uh, episode 16 of my knitting podcast. Um, it's been a while since I last podcasted and it's because it took me ages to finish my two test knits that I was working on. So I genuinely didn't have anything to show you guys. Um, altogether, they took me like almost six, seven weeks to finish up. So I have nothing to show you, but now that I'm done with those, I'm back. <laughs> I'm also available on Ravelry and on Instagram as Cookie Knits, and I'm quite active on both the forums if you wanna follow along with more of my shenanigans. And let's get started. So my first finished object is the one that I'm wearing. This is the Piping Hot Sweater by Lily Kate France, and it is one of the test knits that I was doing, which is out and available now. So I have knit this in, let me show you what it looks like first. So it's a bit of a comfortable fit with this beautiful, fun piping detail on this like modified saddle shoulder, and the piping detail goes down the front as well as down the, the back. <laughs> Is there any elegant way to show that? And um, the piping detail continues onto the cuff, but it stops before the ribbing on the bottom. So I knit this in the mustard color is Bendigo Woolen Mills Rustic 8 Ply, which is now, again, discontinued. It, it was a regular line. I guess it was a limited edition line. And then it came back in for a little bit. I picked this up when I went to Bendigo Sheep and Wool Festival, which I have a vlog of on my channel if you want to watch. And they had a few balls left of it in the shop when I went in. So I picked up four. And I think I used... I don't think I broke into the fourth ball. So I think I used like two and a bit. In the colorway mustard and the pink is fiber art shed the 100% New Zealand Corydale in the colorway pink color and I decided to go with the shade because I wanted like some warm toned cozy sweater vibes for when it gets cold which is not now <laughs> and um, I like the similar depth and intensity of color in the pink and the mustard so where I still get a little bit of a fun pop but not so much that it distracts from like oh what is that um yeah so if you guys have been long-term viewers <laughs> of my podcast you would remember that towards the end of last year I was doing another test knit for Lily in a pattern called the slow down sweater um, it's her version is the hot pink one with the mohair um, V window and I knit mine in black and I ended up um, not being able to finish the knit because it was just way too big, way too clumsy, like not clumsy. Um, I am not a big oversized knit person and that was like just proportionally too big on me so I ended up finishing like not finishing it I unraveled the whole sweater and I remember saying <laughs> that when I do drop shoulder patterns I need to size down and do my upper bust measurement rather than my full bust measurement as I just don't feel like my my shoulder width is quite there to be handled to be able to handle such a big drop shoulder that I would get if I use my full bust measurement. So basically my full bust measurement is a lot bigger proportionally to like my shoulder width. And of course, I completely forgot about that when I started knitting this sweater. And I applied for my regular size and I was knitting it and I was like, this looks huge. And then I was like, oh, clearly I don't learn my lesson. So I did not want to not finish the test knit for Lily again. Um, so I ended up having to shorten the sleeve rather drastically. Um, she says in the pattern to try it on as you go and I was trying it on till halfway and she actually says to finish the cuff at a length that feels a little bit awkward which for me was about here 
so that when it blocks because it's got um, this drop shoulder construction like the, it will relax a lot in this one which will add the little bit extra length that you need and I hadn't even finished all the decreases and my sleeve was already here by the time I tried it on again so when she says in the pattern try it on regularly try it on regularly I ended up having to pull back um, do a rather drastic um, decrease like the I have to decrease the number of rows in between the decreases. <laughs> Take a shot every time I say the word decrease. Um, I had to do a rather drastic decrease right in the bottom half of the decreases. But it fits really, really well now. It's still quite oversized, which I think it looks okay proportionally. But I'm just not used to it. Uh, but I wanted it for a warm cozy sweater and it fully gives me like the warm cozy enveloping vibes I love Bendigo Woolen Mills Rustic. It's one of my favorite Lines that they did. It's probably one of my favorite yarns in general based for proximity availability to me um, the quality of it and the non super wash and how I enjoy how it wears and how I enjoy knitting it because Bendigo is very economical and of course they don't sell this anymore <laughs> anyways <laughs> this is the piping hot sweater by Lily Kate France and the next time you guys see me knitting a drop shoulder please remind me to use my upper bust circumference because <laughs> I feel like if it was just a size smaller it would look so cute for me in my opinion I still like this but I'm just imagining like the perfect fit I wanted and it would have definitely been a size smaller like I was telling myself last year and I don't remember. Yeah. And who's it? Piping Hot Sweater by Lily Kate France. And then my next finished object is the other test knit I was knitting which is the Nila by Marzena Kolacek. Um, Kolacek? I'm not quite sure how to say it, but I'll put all the names on the um, screen. And this was the other, this was the main test knit that took me a longer time than I estimated to finish. Um, let's see, I knit this in Juniper Moon Farms, Patagonia, which is their organic merino in sport weight and five ply in the colorway Icicle. And I bought it from Sunspun Yarns in Melbourne. I also recently got the chance to visit Sunspun with one of my friends Jenny because uh, I got to visit Melbourne as well as Adelaide. I'll have footage of um, all of that stuff towards the end of the episode. But it was so beautiful. Like, if that was my local yarn store, it had Knitting for Olive, it had De Verum Natura, it had Patagonia, Isega. Oh, it was like... But it's okay. I can always order <laughs> online. Not that I need any more yarn. Um, but what, what, what was I talking about? Right, the Nila. So the test knitting process. I personally had no difficulties um, going through the instructions. As you can imagine with the number of details on here. Let me quickly lean in and show you guys. It's a quite involved knit. Especially I think the part that I found a little bit um, not difficult, but definitely like takes up every brain cell of my very small brain <laughs> was to do the short rows as well as the raglan increases in pattern because you're introducing all of these little um, features into it. So it was definitely like a case of having multiple different pages open, keeping track of two, three different things. It doesn't go on for very long, the raglan increases. Part of it, once you start increasing these like little two by two ribs, two by one ribs, <laughs> um, that part is pretty intuitive. So I don't feel like I have to check the pattern every time. But I think being a pattern where every single stitch is a twisted rib, like in between, there's no regular, just knit stitches, there's twisted ribbing two by one. It just took a lot of time. Um, I ended up also having to buy another skein of yarn when I was in Sunspun because I ran out and it wasn't quite the length I had wanted. Um, it was a completely different dye lot but it actually matched quite well like you can't really tell which is great. I ended up adding about four centimeters 
to this sleeve whereas I had to shorten um, the sleeve on the other one so I don't know if I have longer short arms or just drop shoulders <laughs> isn't is not it for me um, I had to add four centimeters and Marzena used uh, Quince and Co Chickadee for her sample and she said that she got a lot of length in it when she blocked it so she was actually recommending people to do a pre-block I did not actually get time to do that <laughs> Um, I ended up making the body maybe a couple of centimeters shorter than the pattern said and it blocked out just enough. I'm actually really, really happy with the length of it because it's the perfect length to wear out or if you just want to do a little French tuck as Tan would say. And I am so proud of myself for being able to finish this garment. I, again, not difficulty wise. I usually tend to, when I'm doing fully involved knits like this, I tend to, if you've been watching my podcast, like my poetry pullover by Sari Nordland or my scratch stillet that I knit for my husband, I tend to leave it for months at a time and come back to it when I'm in the mood. So not being able to put this down kind of killed me a little bit. I think I should not take on any fully involved test knits that need a fully completed garment. Like I know Sari Nordland's test knit, she sometimes asks for the yoke and a sleeve. Like that's about how much I can do before I run out of energy. But I am super, super proud that I managed to do this involved knit with different like charts it's not charted in the way that it shows like it's just got the little individual charts which is a which is a thing I said last year that I had issues with being able to follow multiple charts but I was okay with it I feel like I'm getting better at reading more complex patterns keeping track of multiple things um, and I'm very proud that I finished it and I'm so happy with it it is so beautiful. I love the yarn. I feel like Patagonia is like a dupe of uh, Durerum Natura Ulysses. They're both like woolen spun organic merino, but the Patagonia turned out to be about half the price. They don't quite have the same color range as Ulysses, but I would love to someday. I have this five ply color work pattern in mind and I think I'm going to mix and match between the two different brands to get the colors that I want because they both have very different vibes um, and I'm so happy with it and I was so honored because uh, Marzina who is not only an amazing knitwear designer she's actually a wonderful photographer as well um, she asked if she could photograph me in this sweater so I met up with her for lunch one day um, at, between work and we did a quick little photo shoot and it, it, it looks so good like I can't believe that I knit this sweater I can't wait for you guys to see it Marzena is probably going to be releasing it either end of this month or definitely by early October and I will share when the pattern's out I think it's such a beautiful fun and challenging in its own way <laughs> pattern and I am ah, I'm so pleased with it I wish that I had finished it a little bit earlier so I could have worn it a little bit more this year but it is starting to kind of warm up um, and then get cold in the middle again it's it's a weird it's been a weird couple of weeks but being a five ply sweater a sport weight I feel like it's more suited to what I like to wear I run hot as a person so of course being a knitter is such a struggle for me because I really want to wear all my sweaters but unless I am just sitting around I get too hot like if I'm walking around I get too hot um, it was freezing in Bendigo with like cold winds I mean the sun was out but like cold winds people wearing shawls scarves hats sweaters and I was just wearing like an 8 ply sweater, like a DK weight sweater. And I got so hot. So I feel like 5 ply is probably the perfect weight for me. Um, very, very happy with this finished pro product. This is the Nila by Marzena Kolicek. Okay, I had to change out of the sweater because I was starting to get warm. <laughs> 
And then my next finished object, I cast this on when I was away for three days to Adelaide. And it is the Oslo hat by Petite Knit. I've never knit this pattern before. I fully get the hype. It took me like, if I had, if I wasn't traveling, even with traveling, it took me like four or five days to finish it because it's just a stockinette hat. Um, I knit this in Heirloom Merino Fleck 8 ply in the colorway 6516. And it's just the most perfect dusky pink with light flecks of tweed. I'm very predictable with my color choices. <laughs> I used to find the Heirloom Magic Merino so soft, but now that I've started knitting with other yarns, it doesn't, it feels a bit more, not rustic, definitely not toothy, but toothier, um, which is interesting development. I still love using these yarns for gift knits. They're still merino, so I can say, oh, here's a merino hat I made for you, or a merino scarf. It's soft enough to wear next to skin for most people, no problems. And it's super wash and quite reasonably priced and very well, ex well available in most local yarn stores here. So I do love using this yarn. I have not blocked this hat yet. Um, but it's a triple folded brim. I feel like... <laughs> We all know about the Oslo hat, right? But I still quickly go through. I knit the size large because I measured my head and she big. <laughs> I, I knit the circumference of a size large, but I knit all the lengths of a size medium because I don't have this, the tallest head. And of course, I'm super offended because it fits me great. I haven't blocked it yet, but I really like this hat pattern. It was such a quick smooth knit, like the whole, it was like the perfect like yarn and stockinette in the perfect like needle circumference and it was just flowing. I flew through this hat and I'm planning to make a couple more. I'm planning to make one for my partner and one for my cousin that lives in the UK. Um, so I'll wash and block it and then put it away for storage until next winter because as soon as it gets cold I can pull this out or if we end up going to the snow or anything like it's so cute I love it I usually find it quite hard to find hats that don't make me look like an egg <laughs> I don't like like ripped I realize I'm not the biggest fan of ripped hats um, but this like brim kind of adds width where I would like some width on my head because you know what I'm missing is more width. Um, it just makes me, I don't know, I love it. So I get the Oslo hat height, y'all. Um, yeah, that's my next finished object. And then the last finished object, which um, is a pair of socks. <laughs> so this is probably my last pair of socks for the, until like next winter. There's uh, lots of other things I want to knit and I have a really small like lace weight stockinette t-shirt on the needles that I want to use as a more portable project rather than using socks. But this is again using the simple top down socks pattern by my friend Melissa Paisley who's also the owner of Three Cats Yarns. And I received this pattern as part of her sock making class because that's where I learned how to knit socks. I would highly recommend that class if you are, if you think you might need any help in learning how to knit socks, just to describe the basics, to kind of hold your hand through it in a group class, it's fun, and there's extra, and, and you get a skein of yarn, don't forget that. <laughs> so the only alteration I did for this pair was that I tried a barn toe. Um, a barn toe, I found this toe description on a interweave magazine article called five different toes for your socks or something like that. It has instructions in it, but it's basically just a more rounded toe rather than like a sharp wedge toe. So according to the instructions, the first one, they make you cinch the last few stitches, which I don't like the look of. 
But in the second pair, I ended up kitchenering the last few stitches here. And I love this fit. Maybe I just need to add a little bit extra length to the foot of my sock if I do a wedge toe. Because it feels like it's not straining against like my toe, where my toe would be here, like both sides. Because that's what I thought that giving like a rounded edge would give me more space for my toes. But this toe is also longer. It's a bit longer than the standard wedge toe and I still do the length of my foot to the same length that I was doing with the wedge toe so it's yeah I'll figure it out next winter um, and the yarn forgot about the yarn this is Western Yorkshire Spinners yarn in the colorway English Rose I just love it it reminds me of those like strawberry and cream lollies and I really like the the feel of the yarn as well like I really like how it feels I am definitely more of a, that's not surprising because I'm the same with other yarns. Definitely more of a commercial yarn person, aren't I? <laughs> I really like how like sturdy and like firm, not firm, um, just like how strong the commercial yarn feels. I do like knitting with 75% marine like superwash merino 25% nylon because it sort of has that more strong um not not dense I don't know what the word I'm looking for is um fabric feel I find that the 80 20 the 80 percent merino 20 percent bases I find them almost too soft for socks like I want a hard wearing that's the word I'm looking for it feels hard wearing I want more of a hard wearing sock I like the Western Yorkshire spinners. I like the Regia tweed. That one's definitely more rustic as well. Like I can feel it more on my foot than I can feel this one. But they all feel very uh, hard working, everyday socks. Yeah, um, that's my last finished object. <laughs> now moving on to my works in progress. After doing the Nila, which is a rather involved knit, I am not at all in the mood to do any sort of intense knitting. Um, I'm planning. I am planning to do the MCAL. I'll talk about it later. Because <laughs> if you watched my last episode, I said I wasn't going to do the MCAL. Anyways, so I re-picked up my work in progress that had been left for a little bit, and this is the Koto by Olga Buraya Kefelian. This is a pattern for Brooklyn Tweed. And I'm using the yarn Skeins Tweed. That's the label. Skeins with the NZ. In the colorway Wisteria, which is a 10 ply, 92% superwash wool, and 8% neps. So I think the neps are rayon or nylon or something. I will keep harping on, but I love this yarn. It's so beautiful, and this is a knit for my friend Ana. The last time you guys saw me, I think I had reached just on the front, like up to about where the shoulders are, but I hadn't done the short row shaping yet. And yeah, I hadn't done the back or anything. I mean, I hadn't done from where we split for front and back. I hadn't, it, it's a bottom up design. I, <laughs> there's a couple of things. There's a couple of things. They're not, they're not negative things. They're just something that I wish I had been more aware of. So the way that the design goes, let me scooch up closer so you guys can see. You knit bottom up until how, like whatever point they say on the shoulder. And then you do short rows back and forth to shape the shoulder here as well as here. It's short rows on both sides. And then you stop. And the row that you stop on, it, it, there's no instruction saying stop on this row. So you just, you just stop wherever the short rows ended up stopping. I think it says to like finish on either the wrong side or the right side before you start the short rows. And then you split the yarn into two, one for the right neck and you continue this like sort of short row shaping here and then one for the left. And then you do the same for the back and then you three needle bind the shoulders together and then you pick up yarn for the, you pick up the collar and then you start with a purl stitch. So this stitch pattern is a three rows of knitting, one row of purl. 
and it's called an articulated rib in this pattern. I, by all good luck, hopes and prayers by the knitting gods, happen to line the front exactly right. Like this is where I picked up the collar and then the first row in the collar is a pearl. So as you can see, that lines up perfectly. That's the where I ended up stopping and picking up. Which is great because it's a like it's it looks seamless. It did not happen on the back because I didn't realize that that's where this pattern was going. So in the back, I have two pearl rows together. Ask me if it's driving me nuts. <laughs> It's driving me crazy. Um, it's just the back. It's a short little bit. It's not even for me. My friend has long hair. She says she doesn't care. But I'm actually planning to knit this for myself again. And now I'm going to have to do some math to figure out how I can not have that happen. So this pattern was originally like released quite a few years ago and then it's been reworked so it's part of the Brooklyn Tweed revival and in the old pictures like the old sample pictures from the first time it came around this doesn't line up it actually doesn't look too bad if you've got one or even two rows of the ribbing in the middle of the two um, pearl ridges like it kind of still looks intentional like the collar will stand up it looks different in 3D I understand that um, I just hate that the two pearl rows are right next to each other. That's doing me in. So in the old pictures, it doesn't line up in the front or the back. But I did notice in the sample for the revival, it lined up perfectly in the front and the back. Like I wish there was a little detail saying, you know, for each size, finish. Because there's lots of different parts where it says finish on round three of the rib or finish on round two of the rib. I wish like there would have been some detail to be like knit the front this length finish on this round so that then you do calculate the short rows and it would end up with because obviously it's possible either the designer or who the sample knitter is has managed to do the both the front and the back in the renewed reworked piece so I guess that's my rant I'm, when I knit my own pattern I'm going to have to figure it out because I cannot, like, if the front had the two ribs together, I would have undone the whole thing. Like, it's so, it's such a graphic design, you know, like, it would not have looked good with the two ribs together. Like, imagine if this was the front. I'm probably overreacting. All of you will be like, who cares? <laughs> I care. I care. Okay, so that's a future IRA problem that I'm going to have to do some calculations. I thought I was about to run out of yarn because just this collar, it's like a double folded down collar. It tells you to whip stitch the collar down, but I ended up just picking up a pearl bump and knitting it together and casting off as I went, which makes, a, which makes it a little bit easier. One time I whip stitched my collar down, I could barely get my head through it. So I'm a little bit burnt, <laughs> burnt by it. And then the sleeves are knit bottom up. Because it has this little like, it has the same folded down detail on the rib, but just obviously a lot smaller rows than in the collar. And this is done with a provisional cast on. And then you knit a few rounds and then you fold it together. And it's done the same thing on the sleeves, but I wasn't sure if I was going to run out of yarn for the sleeves. The sleeves are knit bottom up, starting with that provisional cast on, and then to whatever length it says with how many of it decreases, and then you seam it on. So in a very un ira like move, <laughs> I am altering the pattern. Who am I? Um, I am knitting it. It's the easiest alteration too, but you know, I don't like doing it. I don't like having to think. I am doing the sleeve top down. I picked up stitches here and you know, it says like finish these many decreases and then knit on until the sleeve is this length. So I wasn't sure when to begin the decreases because it doesn't actually give you the length between the last decrease and the top of the sleeve before you finish off. So luckily, and it has quite skinny arms, so I've told her to 
just stuff them in here even if it doesn't like I'm like make it work um so I'm knitting a top down I've finished like two balls here and I'm knitting the other side with because I have I had like just under six balls in total um so I'm knitting the other side down and then I'm going to see how far I can get with the last ball and then I'm going to do I'm still going to do that folded feature on the cuff but I'll just do it like I did the collar where I will knit it and then fold it and then I'll pick up a pearl bump and I'm planning to do it that way hopefully I get the length that I need it's looking like it will and this like pattern is quite stretchy so I can always just block a little bit extra length in there if I need it but it's looking quite doable so hopefully I'll get a sweater that Anae loves uh, she's tried it on the booty aspect which I had mentioned previously that the sweater wasn't lying properly it's actually I think just with the weight of it it's I haven't blocked it but it's already less booty-ish which she's devastated about because I had promised her it would give her a booty and now it isn't but it fits her really really well um I haven't tried it on since I did the collar or the sleeve she tried it on when the shoulders and stuff had come together after short rows oh it looks great beautiful sweater I am planning to buy some Ulysses um, de Verum Natura Gilead which is a uh, worsted weight 10 ply um, woolen spun yarn just like the recommended yarn for Brooklyn Tweed is I, I don't know what the name of the yarn is it Shelter? I think Shelter is 4 ply not sure but their yarns are woolen spun and I had told Anne that it might lie differently on her because this is a very architectural design and the way the pattern pictures, the way it falls on the body, it has a lot of structure to it. And I think a lot, a big, most of the part of that is because of the yarn choice. So I told her it might lie differently, but she was, she's, she's happy with it either way, she said. So that's the Koto by Olga Burakafelian. Hopefully I'll be done with this by the time I see you guys next time. And then my other work in project, work in pro, how? Do I say work in project? I'm either saying work in progress or I'm saying working project and they both confuse me. So my next whip, we'll just go with whip, is a test knit and I'm testing this pattern called the Mikol for Vera and this pattern is... I just started knitting it. I've gone this far. So it starts off with the provisional cast on in the middle of the chest and then the lace sleeves are knit this way and then you pick up and you knit it down this way. I am using um, Knit Picks Gloss Fingering in the colorway Plume. It's just the most stunning color and this yarn is provided for yarn support for the test knit so oh, I'll put in the yarn provided ad thing um it's not an ad i'm not getting paid for it and the yarn was provided to vera who gave it to me because she's might work with knit picks to release it so she's going to have a sample done in knit picks yarn i got to pick the color so i picked this color because i one time modeled for vera's wattle wrap that she also knit out of knit picks yarn and it was this exact shade and i cannot tell you how beautiful i found it especially on me I was obsessed you'll see a theme coming up because I have another <laughs> colorway coming up but this is bloom so I'm not gonna lie I have very low motivation to work on this knit at the moment I kind it kind of looks like I'm knitting pomegranates like I'm not mad at it you know because I just came off of the Nila and I just want to knit something a bit more free-flowing but I'm working on it Luckily, the lace repeat is really, really short. It's like 40-something stitches. It's quite intuitive. At the moment, it's symmetrical, but it'll become not symmetrical once the sleeves start up. So I'm just knitting on it a bit as I go every day. Um, I'm sure the motivation will come back. I tend to yo-yo between the type of knitting I want to do. Um, this is the Mikol in Knit Picks Gloss Fingering. Um, gloss is a wool and silk blend yarn and it's so soft and it's so beautiful it's definitely so soft and it's it's a bit splitty when I'm 
doing the cables without the cable needle. It's also on a 2.75 millimeter, so it's like already a tiny, tiny needle that I'm trying to shove in there. But um, nothing unmanageable. I just have to basically like look down as I'm doing it, being like, oh, you catching all of the yarn arrow? Because I tend to knit rather mindlessly. May call by my friend Vera in it picks gloss fingering the colorway plume. So those are the only two works in progress <laughs> whips that I have going on. Um, coming up next, I'm going to go through some of the acquisitions I got recently and I'm also going to talk about what I'm planning to make with those things. So it'll be sort of a combined acquisitions and future plans. So if you watched my Bendigo <laughs> Woolen Mills vlog, um, you would have met Elena, who is the podcaster and amazing, amazing person behind Simple Knit Co. Um, I am shamelessly confident to say that she's probably my favorite knit, co knit podcaster to watch, her and Mel Make Stuff. I love them both. Um, we, if you watched her latest episode, when we were in Bendigo, when I was at the Woolen Mill shop, I saw this colorway of their new yarn called Prism. Ah, I know, gorgeous. And Eleanor just happened to buy it. And I was, I had already got a few things from Bendigo and I was like, okay, I don't need to also buy this there. I'll just buy it later when I get home. So I had told Eleanor, oh my God, I'm going to buy it as soon as I get home. So fast forward a few weeks, I watch her podcast, she's showing this yarn off and she goes, if you watch Ira, Ira's also bought this yarn and I had completely forgotten about it. So I was like, oh my god, thank you for the reminder. Thank you, Elena, Enabler Extraordinaire. And I go to look at this yarn online and it's not there, like the shade is not there. The rest of the prism lines are there, this colorway is not there, it's not even the out in the out of stock section. And I was like excuse me, I need to get this yarn. So I said, oh, I'll just ring them the next day because sometimes the Bendigo website might have a glitch. Like it's not even in the out of stock shades. Like I know it exists, people have it. It should be there. And the next day I go to the Bendigo website to look up the phone number and I look and it's back. So I bought three balls of this. It's so beautiful. It's like this orangey and pink uh, variegated, not variegated, long color changing yarn. So the prism is 8 ply, DK weight, 100% pure wool from, it says machine washable. And I think the only difference between this and Bloom was that Bloom was hand washed. So I think this is just the machine washable version of it. I didn't even care. I wanted this color. I'm thinking of making like a zipper sweater light like the DK weight version so let's see or I'm tossing up between options I'm not sure but I know it needs to be perfect um, thanks for the reminder Elena I bought some and then the next thing I bought was these two skeins of this yarn from Glen Heaven Knits who is a Sydney based hand dyer I bought this at the spinning Spinners and Weaver, Weavers first, um, like showcase at um, Epping, and I didn't even know that was happening. I went for a knitting brunch for the Australian Discord group, and then tons of people were going to this yarn show, and I was like, oh, I'll go. And I found this yarn in the discount bin, and it's four ply Bellevue Park um, super fine Australian merino. So Bellevue Park is a different yarn producer, I think, and they make four ply, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure, they might have other ones, but they make super, super soft, non-super wash Australian merino yarns. So I think this is over dyed by Glen Heaven Knits and the shade is called Blushing Coral and it's just the most soft yarn. Ah. Oh. I am planning to use this with the two other skeins that I have in my stash already to make a shawl for my bonus mom. She loves all of my shawls. She only, she loves all of my MCALs. I'm like, you can't have my MCALs. <laughs> she's not asking for it. But she loves all my shawls and she's always like, oh, those are my colors. 
And then the next shawl will be like a completely different color scheme. And she'd be like, those are my colors. I was like, I get it, mommy. You just want a shawl. So I showed her the yarns and I got her to pick a pattern. She's picked a shawl pattern by Melanie Berg, which I haven't knit a shawl pattern by Melanie Berg before. And I will probably cast it on maybe after the MCAL. I'll see what my mood is like because I can't imagine wanting to make two shawls back to back when I barely make two shawls in a year. So, but you know, I don't want, I mean, I don't have to give it to her for this winter. She lives in Nepal, so it's going into winter and I don't know. I'll see how it goes. If I manage to get into the mood and knit it and send it like maybe in December, she'll still get a couple of months use out of it. Beautiful, soft yarn. I'm going to have to send her washing instructions. And then, coming to the MCAL, which I have mentioned already multiple times. I have always loved people's yarns when they did the past two MCALs that I've done. I did the shallography and I did twists and turns. And I loved people who did like really low contrast, like neutral shawl like just all beiges or grays and I was and I remember like every single year I was like oh I gotta get a neutral lowish contrast shawl like a gradient even though it says five different you know colors like contrasting colors I always wanted and I was like I'm gonna make a gradient shawl this year neutrals and then came up to when like six weeks ago my last podcast because I felt like my test knits were taking so much time and I had so many things I wanted to make. So many things out of my make nine I haven't even thought of. And the years just gone past probably because we got the house and we did a bit of renovation. Like, I was busy. Um, and I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to do the MCAL this year. It takes my whole month. Um, and then it goes into busy period at work and I just don't have the headspace to do complicated stuff. So October might be the last I have to do, especially the marine wall and sweater that I want to do. And then Stephen West goes, this year's theme is a gradient. And I was like, oh, <laughs> fine, I'll do it. <laughs> so I tried to keep to a budget of under $20 a skein for the yarn. I bought some host gun. So this is in the colorway Bleached White. So I got this from my friend Jane. She's mindful making and she's one of the um, stockists of Pulse Yarn in Australia here. So I bought this and I bought this colorway called Slate Grey. And I bought both of these at the Fiber Fest Festival in Wyoming. So those are my purchases. And then I also purchased this gray old stock from Adagio Mills, which is 150 grams that I got for 20 bucks. Let me just take it out of the packaging so there's no rustling. And it's just this beautiful gray and just the softest yarn. One of my friends, Vera, that uh, the designer of the McCall, she currently has a shawl in testing that she used Adagio yarn for. And I was, oh, the yarn's beautiful. And then, I'm using my leftover colorway almond of Holst Gun from knitting my botanical yoke pullover, which is the sweater I'm wearing in my first ever episode of my podcast. So I pulled this out from stash to make my gradient for the shawl. So we need four colors. So I don't know if this has enough contrast for the shawl, but like I said, I'm happy with the low contrast. This, this, then this, then the light gray. And then the dark gray. So that's going to be my MCAL colorway. Oh my god, how do how do people handle this? Anyways, I'm excited now. It's gonna be hopefully fun and not as tedious as last year's was. Last year's was when I was getting through it, like of course I was like, this is tedious as heck, but I didn't realize how much. Like, how much I didn't enjoy Clue 1 until it came the time to think about if I wanted to do this MCAL, this year's MCAL. And the whole thing about me, like, wanting time and stuff as well, but I did not... <laughs> I don't want to do another Clue 1 like last year's. That was not fun. So I hope Stephen West, Mr. West, 
takes the feedback a little bit about about finding the balance between fun features but also fun to knit. I feel like that went a little bit, I mean, it looked great, the little eye cords to like make the little braid. Oh, but it took a long time. And then my next acquisition, I don't know how I got so lucky. What? So a fellow test knitter for the Nila ended up using this yarn from her colorway. This is Ulysses, the Dinarium Natura Ulysses, which is, again, the five-ply woolen spun organic merino yarn that I was mentioning earlier. In the colorway, uh, I'm just gonna put it on the screen. C-O-N-F, De Rose, Conf, Conf, De Rose? Um, and this was the exact shade and the exact yarn I was looking at when I was deciding to get yarn for that um, test knit. So this person, I don't know if she wants me to say her name or not, but she's a great, great knitter from Melbourne. Um, she ended up having this in a sash ready to go and she cast on with this. So I was like, oh, okay, if somebody else is doing the exact same yarn and the exact same color, photo-wise it's not great variance for the... Um, designer but also like it's not a great variance in the options of yarns to use so I ended up going for the Juniper Moon Fonts which I'm super happy about but she ended up having a really bad reaction to this yarn I think it irritated her eczema so she was asking if anybody in Australia and I was the only other <laughs> tester in Australia I, no I wasn't but I happened to get there first she was just asking if anybody wanted the yarn because she was just giving it away because it irritated her too much so I just she sent me a whole sweater quantity word of this amazing yarn in the exact shade I had been eyeing. I cannot believe my luck. She also said like a half knit sweater and I felt so bad unraveling it. But now I have like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 skeins. I can make like a full... And because they're woolen spun, they tend to have good yardage, right? There's 185 meters and 50 grams. just came to me. Thank you. You know who you are that sent me the yarn. I don't even know if you watched the channel, but I've thanked her a lot. And I can't wait. Are you kidding me? It's so... What? Thank you. <laughs> and then my last acquisition. So Bendigo came out with another limited edition yarn called Woodland. It's 83%, that's so specific, 83% wool, 10% bamboo, 4% mohair, and 3% nets. And I got five balls, so I got a thousand grams of it in this colorway river sand, which is like a off-white with rainbow flecks in it. This is here for very exciting plants. So, me and Anne are going to make our own advent calendar for yarn, um, and we're planning to knit a blanket out of it. So, I wanted to get an advent calendar, but I, A, the cost of it is a lot, rightfully so. I'm not saying it's not expensive work, but B, it's superwash yarn, 10 grams. I didn't know what I would make out of it, didn't know if the color would be like a coherent story and I didn't want to spend that much money and I have yarn that might just end up lying around in our in our stash <laughs> and then I combine stash no in my stash um so I I spoke to her about it last year and I was like what do you think if we order 25 different colorways of Holstgarn you know the little balls and then we make our own advent calendar and that way it would cost us a lot less and we would get 25 grams each because it's a 50 gram ball as opposed to 10 grams and we'd have lots of options with what we could make with it and all the yarns would work well together because Holst has all heathered colors so our original plan was for my husband to choose the colors and he was even offering to ball each one up into 25 grams, which is super generous of him, and put it into the label like day one, day two, day three thing, and make that in calendar for us. Planning to buy it during the Black Friday sales. I think Holst always has Black Friday sales. And 
And then Laura from Penrose Knits came out with her sweet shop blanket. And I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with the options with use of color and how she designed it to have 10 grams of fingering weight in each like colored half triangle. I, like, and I was like, this is perfect. Because before that we were tossing up between doing like habitation throw or I hadn't fully decided what advent calendar, what advent project yet. But the way that this is a modular knit, like you can knit a square and then you like cast off and it's like a small project in a big project and not have like a huge throw like lingering and weighing you down in your whip pile for the whole year. So I showed it to Anne and she was like, this is great, perfect. So this is the yarn that we've decided to go with for the white. So it's got like these beautiful rainbow flecks. And it's 8 ply, so we just need to hold it single. And it's Bendigo, so it's affordable. So we looked up the pattern. She's decided to knit a throw size. I've decided to knit a bed size. I needed 5 balls, she needed 3 balls. We've ordered it, we're ready. But because <laughs> I'm a control freak, um, I've ended up making... I ended up telling my husband that I will just choose the, the whole colors myself. So I've ended up choosing like a gradient yarn, gradient like rainbow to go with this and I have the names and stuff ready and then I'll just ball it up myself. So it'll only be a surprise for Anna, it won't be a surprise for me. So that's probably the last yarn purchase of the year which will be the advent and we'll just knit on the blanket next year. I'm going to try and finish it in a year. Try being the keyword because the large bed size has 99 squares I think so it's a lot of work. Um, but the good thing about it being modular is you can always add on to it. So I can always make it more of a lap size, use it on the sofa, and then add on to it. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to make my own advent. I got the 1121 Windmills Notions advent last year instead of a yarn advent because of the same reason. I just, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to gel with the yarn advent. So, oh, excuse me. Um, and I love the Notions um, calendar. It was like mythological creatures. I'm not sure what her theme is this year. I don't think I need two years in a row of Notions Advent. So I've decided to go with this version to have a little something something to open every morning. So let's see. I have a little bit of footage coming up because I went to Melbourne. I went to um, Adelaide and just did a few more stu fun stuff. This has already been a busy month, September. And I have been going on and on for ages. I had a lot of stuff to talk about. But thank you everyone for keeping me company. And for letting me keep you company, I guess, is the more accurate way to say it. Um, hope you guys are all happy and getting knitting done. And looking forward to either the winter, um, cozy weather, or the warmer weather for us in Australia. Enjoying the more um, sunshine that's out. There's still some cold wind, but... Uh, my garden is in full bloom. It's so wonderful. There's bees everywhere. I'm like, yes, get nectar bees. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.